I'm Dana Blickensurfer with Provoke Art, and I'm sitting here with... Yeah, I go by Jonathan Schiemann. Schiemann. Yes, Schiemann. Uh, this name is a part of a performance. It's, a, it's an, my official name, but uh, it reflects um, a lot of family members who, who, who had to come before me, uh, so I couldn't be here today, and they're very relevant people to me. So you changed your name? Yes, from my birth oh, name okay. to this artistic name that, that has a whole uh, history behind it. When did you change your name? Quite recently. Um, yeah. Yes, I would say uh, uh, less than a year ago. I officially—I was already using it for many years, and then I officially uh, changed it. And that was—that's kind of like how. So that the reason why it intrigues me is it's kind of, of what we're sitting here talking exactly. about today. So if you can tell me, um, this is a pop-up show during Miami Art Week. Yes. And uh, why did you choose this location? This location here was one of the few locations where I could actually have this show, in the sense that, I mean, conceptually speaking, uh, this could not have been done just in about, about anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it had to be done in a space, first of all, that would be uh, occupied by art. Uh, it had to be pop-up, mm -hmm. you know, it could not be in a, in a regular art space. And uh, but secondly, be, this being uh, an, an old uh, historical temple, one of the first ones in, uh, in Miami. Oh, really? Uh, yes, from the early 1930s. Wow. Uh, as, as you take a look at the, at the conceptual part of the, of, the, of the collection, this is called Journey. And these are people who were deprived from having a spiritual home. Uh, their identities were stripped away from them. So it had to be done in a place where I would bring them back to a place where they, these characters that are behind the, the story, would feel comfortable. In other words, they were never able uh, during their lifetimes to uh, find a place of comfort, of, uh, of, uh, of a spiritual nourishment. Mm -hmm. So by bringing the artwork into this space, we're sort of dedicating, uh, giving them that space today as a, as a memory. Wow. That's, so how long did the... Uh search happen. Well, so yeah so the journey is about a search right it started uh, I would say by the year 2000 in 1998 I started asking many many questions by the year 2000 I was actively researching uh, this family background and uh, and then I started collecting documents from there on and that Still to this day, I still, uh, you know, it's an ongoing process. Uh, technology is incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, you have archives that are almost completely online and scanned. You might have to have permission to access them. But for instance, the Inquisitional Archives of Portugal are completely open. Uh, you have an online database where you can do research. Mm -hmm. So uh, between the year 2000 to the year um, today I have been uh, doing this research but heavily the past 10 years I found the bulk of the of the work wow. yes. so the um, exhibition um, for just the weekend yes right? no actually five days five days yes so, so a whole week yes it's we've been beautiful. open we've been and how open. many pieces is it it's total in total oh wow so of 2D, of paintings, between the paintings that you see on the wall and the panels that are hanging, uh -huh. uh, these are 40. 40? Yes, and then you have uh, a number of sculptures. Yes. And then you have a, uh, a, a sculpture that was done on site with the Jerusalem stones. So I would say, and then performance pieces, video, time-based art. And uh, these are maybe four or five of them. So I would say we have a total of maybe 50 works of art. Yeah. And these were done mostly, uh, they were all completed in the year of uh, 2015, this year. Wow. And it was like a couple of months, the process, building up? Yes, there. well, the building up uh, from the beginning of the year, okay. uh, I would say for the performances and the sculptures. The they sculptures take a long time. Take a long time. Yes. The bulk of the paintings that are uh, realism in oil, they were done in six weeks. Yes. A rigorous work. Uh, incredibly, about 12 hours a day. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> so the name of the show, what is the name of the, the show? The name is hashtag I am diaspora. Hashtag I am di yes. diaspora. Yes. Okay. So why diaspora and why the hashtag, That's right? That's a good question. <laughs> well, it's important that it's, when you say diaspora, you connect yourself to some kind of uh, antiquity, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we have many, many diasporas. In the US, we talk a lot about the African diaspora. 
but there's also the Jewish diaspora, the Arabic diaspora, Muslim diaspora, and you have Hindu diasporas, right? Um, this one here is talking about the Spanish um, uh, exiles who were exiled because of their religious or ethnic, uh, there's a blend of that identity. Um, and uh, the hashtag is to show that it is relevant today. So today we're in the age of, of, uh, of uh, information and global communication, and we can share our personal journeys and identities through hashtagging. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why it was incredibly important to have a hashtag as part of the title. Mm -hmm. So I see there's a lot of um, elements to your, um, to the, the show. You have a lot of, you have the performance piece yes. in the back. You have this, uh, participation with the yes, stone. Yes. You have the poetry. Yes. I mean, you have like all the senses. I mean, yes. we're just missing smell, but. Uh. <laughs> yes. So why, I, my question is, can you, if so, this week, this week as people go through, can you walk me through um, your expression of what you were trying to share? Well, what I'm trying and to you're, share, you're And yes. you're a sim symbolist. I'm a symbolist artist, okay. yes, yes. So what does that mean to you? Like what is? Mm -hmm. Well, as a symbolist artist, you have to think of uh, every element uh, has carries a value, right? Everything is has a meaning beyond the materiality of it. Um, so, first of all, the space is a, is a narrow space, which resembles greatly a pathway. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's a corridor. It's a hallway. It's a place of, of transit. It's a place of a where you pass by to get from one place to another, mm -hmm. right? Uh, keeping that in mind, the, the collection titled Journey uh, is perfectly fitting here. Um, and then at the beginning- and it's self, it's, self journey. It's a self journey. For your work. For, yes, my own work that reflects a journey of discover uh, okay. that started as, a, as my, uh, my own immigration took place from Brazil to the US. And then I, as I was in search of my own roots, I found a whole lot going on that would explain why my family got from the Iberian Peninsula to Brazil and how they got to the Iberian Peninsula at first. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything uh, explaining, it explained a lot of uh, the traditions that we had, a lot of the reasons why we would, we would compulsively migrate. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give you an idea, in Brazil, we moved 21 times as I was a child. You did. We, I did personally wow. moved 21 times. Wow. So, a lot. so it's like we, we would uh, have an issue and then we would move. It was very easy for us to migrate. Mm -hmm. And uh, like running. Yeah, Just this constant, uh, the easiness that we had was disturbing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, for many people, it's uh, the place where you're born is very important. And for my family, uh, our home was ourselves, so we couldn't have that anywhere. It's kind of peaceful. In a way, yes. Mm -hmm. In a way, yes. In the There's other, no mi worry about materialism. Yes, materialism. Uh, it's not very tangible. Your home is not a tangible home. Mm -hmm. It's really the family circle. Yeah. Yes. As long as that doesn't change, you are always at home. Yes. Yes. So, so yes, you have. Uh, it's really about uh, the story of migration. But, um, and then the, we have rocks, we have stones that you can pick up in the very beginning of the show. And a lot of people, they look at this pile and they say, is this a sculpture? Is this, um, what, is this something serious? Is this a joke? And I usually let people decide what to do with them. And if they ask a question, I say, why don't you pick up one? And then you might find out what to do with it at the end of the show, at the end of the, of the hallway, let's call it, of the, of the gallery. And they usually place that at the very end where we have a memorial, some kind of tomb, or sometimes they place it on top of a sculpture. Mm -hmm. And they realize that they are paying homage or trying to recall a memory of an ancestor, as it is done in the Middle East when you go to a cemetery and you visit somebody's tomb and you place a rock to say, I was here because I care about you, I still think about you. Mm -hmm. And you're honoring their memory. So in a way, by placing a rock at that monument there, we're honoring the memory of these people who basically disappeared from history. They never had proper burials. Uh, today we can honor them. But also the people who come here, they can honor their own ancestors or their own memories. 
So we've had throughout the week people coming in, kneeling there, uh, offering their own prayers. Really? And, and incredibly, I mean, as an artist, you can only imagine I how it feels. Like, so that's the epitome of what you want to Exactly. You wanna, we were looking for so an emotional. Right? We have yeah. the strongest emotional response possible. So yeah. it's incredible. It's humbling for, my, for me as an artist to see that. But again, as I talk about my own, I, I try to use my own narrative as just a starting point to have a conversation with everybody that comes in. Of course. We are in Miami. Yeah. Uh, this, we call it the capital of Latin America, mm. uh, but it's also the, cross, the crossing point of, uh, between the East and the West, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the South and the North. Mm. Uh, so all I can say is that anybody who came in here, uh, I had a very pleasant chat with, yeah. a, with a great number of people about their own histories. So it's just, uh, I'm offering a starting point for a conversation through art. That's, that was my leading into my next question, the, the, um, what, the res what were you receiving from the audience, the viewer? Well, uh, let me give you some examples. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the more surprising um, responses I received, uh, I had people who said, my family went through the same exact journey. In other words, they said, what you're telling me, I also discovered. Mm -hmm. And then, then we would sit down and be like, but tell me more about that. So the, 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 the in other words, I'm, I'm not a rare case. I'm not trying to make a statement that I am uh, uh, somebody with a special kind of story. What I found out is that there's a lot of people who have a very similar connection that follow the same timeline almost. Mm. That's one of, of a very surprising kind of uh, response I received. The other, uh, the other responses I, I received, which I'm very pleased to know, is that people across the the racial, ethnic, and religious spectrum, and even gender, uh, have found a connection to this uh, collection. Mm. Uh, we 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 had uh, a lot of people who came in. Um, and then they left and saying, you, this was transformative. The way that you're talking about embracing identity, uh, the way that you're talking about reclaiming who you are or claiming who you want to be mm -hmm. uh, is incredibly powerful. And, 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 and they touched, they found their own reasons, their own characters, their sick. own context yeah. to connect with this. I mean, it's very provocative. It's provoking because, you know, it's amazing some people never find that. No. Never search, no. never, and they may be missing something, you know, they feel that void or wondering, you know, of course. but you did the digging and it brings yes. this melting pot of communication, yes. it's yes. beautiful. Yes, and you know, the, 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 the most important part is that it really is, uh, we had people from all ages, uh, we had one, one teenager girl who, she was the one who found out uh, the symbolism, she said, oh, these colors, they mean countries. I can she, tell, she, yes. She pulled that back, yes. that's amazing. Really fast. And then we had someone who fought in, in World War II, mm -hmm. who said, listen, I have a story to tell you. Mm -hmm. And then he told me about the story, how he met his wife. Wow. And it was about trying to defend identity and, 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 and uh, going to war for that. And mm -hmm. that's how he met his wife, who was an immigrant to this country from, 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 from Germany. Wow. So it, it's really amazing. This was obviously an older uh, yeah. gentleman. And um, what my, my my favorite part is the sculpture. So can you talk to me a little bit about the dialogue between the sculptures and your paintings? Because the paintings are very um, more traditional, more you know, yeah, yeah. more fine art. And, yeah. And these are just, I mean, yes. The, how do they relate? So that's a very good question. So yes, a lot of um, when you are comfortable with 2D with painting. Uh, you have a language, right? That you speak through that language in a 2D form. And then what happens when you migrate into, again, the word migration here, <laughs> uh, into 3D? Mm -hmm. Well, um, what happened to my own experience was this. Um, I, felt, I felt very comfortable painting, drawing, painting, and I needed to explore more. So go, you, go you painted beyond. first? Yes, I painted first. Okay. You know, drawing, painting, all that. Acrylics, oils, I felt incredibly comfortable with mm -hmm. that. I felt that uh, 
Um, I wanted to take it to the next level that personally I felt that I needed to go through. Yeah. Um, and I put myself in this vulnerable situation. And I, I, uh, I was able to join uh, workshops and get mentors. And I learned uh, a great amount of techniques. And this is cast metal, which is a process that takes months to get to this uh, level. You start with uh, a face uh, mold of someone, and then you transfer it from plaster to silicone to, to wax, and then finally put that in a kiln, and then you can pour molten metal, and then eventually have a sculpture in metal. That you, then you have to work on that to polish and make it look presentable. Process. It's a process. They're, they're gorgeous. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the, the important part of this process, uh, how do they communicate with each other, for me is this. Painting is something that you, my process, my personal process, is you can be drinking your coffee, your tea, your water, your wine, and paint. You can stop and think. It's full of contemplation. It's, it takes place in the white cube or in your private studio where you're comfortable. There's a couch involved or seating. Seating is just as important as painting for a painter, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a process that's comfortable mm -hmm. in a way. Sculpture is very violent. It's uh, very physical. For you to create sculpture, there's no way you're not going to physically hurt yourself. Yeah. You can, and if you're not careful enough, you will lose limbs. Uh, the process is, is industrial. Uh, it involves temperatures up to 2,000 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, it involves cutting tools that uh, doesn't differentiate between wood and metal and fingers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you get hurt, mm -hmm. uh, you, you get scratched, and, uh, and you fight. So I really felt that this uh, it, it, it is a very brutal process. And that is reflected in the sculpture for myself. Uh, the response that I had bouncing back between the material and the creator, um, I had to fight back. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get these pieces here. Mm -hmm. uh, while the painting is, is more romantic, more poetic. Mm -hmm. um, so here I could release a lot of energy. But then that energy that I needed eventually that had to be more centered, I could bring back to the, to the canvas. It feels like they, had, they have to be together. In yes, sense. yes, they have to be together. It, it, it speaks, it really, like, it makes it. Well, I feel that um, the, uh, the, the volume that you, that you seek to have sometimes in painting uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an inherent uh, part of, uh, of, of, of sculpture. But then you, 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 have, to, you have to manipulate mm -hmm. uh, the, the three-dimensionality of sculpture uh, just uh, in, 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 in the opposite way that, you, that it comes too easily. As in, in painting, uh, it's always 2D and you have to fight to get a, a third dimension. Yeah. In, in sculpture, you have to fight to be able to get uh, something that's more easily understood in a 2D format. Mm -hmm. In other words, how can you make it uh, more approachable? How can you manipulate the, the 3D part of it? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that, for me, uh, was very interesting to, to fight against. Mm -hmm. So as a painter who became a sculptor, I, I felt that um, it has opened my eyes uh, in different ways. And then the, having a similar discourse uh, made me explore uh, language and, and message uh, in a broader way. And, and, I f and I feel that I could not have done this uh, through painting. Mm. So the, the medium was the medium not of choice, but that I was obliged to use for the proper sending of this message. And the, um, uh, the video installation that you mm -hmm. had, um, you used the sculptures in oh, the Oh yes, video. yes. So, um, like tell me when did you do, did you like do the, the sculptures and then do the performance yes, piece? Or yes. was it during the whole process? How did that work? That's a very good question. So, incredible. Uh, this, this, this is a 
this is a question of like what is this art piece, right? Mm -hmm. um, what it is not is that it's not precious. It is not precious. In other words, this is placed on top of pebbles. Uh, on top of a, of, a, of a, there's nothing, there's not a dome of yeah, glass. Yeah, it's all exposed. It's exposed mm -hmm. and many people touch it and they participate with that. Uh, the, the performance pieces that I have is all about that. Mm -hmm. You know, they are all about interacting with the piece. So I usually put together a, a, a performance. Uh, as I look at this, I take out the cell phone and I and I put it on a stand and I say, let me interact with this. And that's how these performance pieces come about. Um, so first you have the, the, the sculptures and then you have an interval where you have time to digest uh, what the sculptures mean to you and how you relate to them. And then I take them and I create a performance piece. Mm -hmm. And the performance piece sometimes is done uh, solo and then many times it's part of a larger uh, exhibit where people can interact with 